Welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. Uh, my name is Art Bergeron. For those of you who haven't seen the show, uh, I am an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 60 of us, 60 lawyers there. I am the person who does elder law. Uh, I have also done presentations at the Ashland Senior Center, which is where you may have seen me. Uh, but I do these shows, Bergeron Briefs, to acquaint you with people who, as seniors, you probably want to, you should want to know. Uh, and one of them is Ann Newbery, who was kind enough to come today, right, to talk to us about kind of what you do and what, the bu what your business is, right? So first of all, what do you do? What, is your, what, is, what do you do? Well, I'm officially known as a senior move manager. A senior move manager. Yes. This is kind of like when I talk to people about, ger about geriatric care managers, and they go, what, right? Uh -huh. um, and so you're, you're a senior move manager, and, and what does that mean? Uh, what that means is when you get ready to downsize, any sort of downsize, whether you're going from a house you've lived in for 100 years for, through the family or yeah. whether you're just going from an apartment to a smaller apartment or to your kid's house, yeah. Uh, yeah. you have a lot of stuff. Or, or if you're going to assisted living, for example. Yes. Or, or, or as you say, just going from the big house, but you're saying you really want to be in a condominium. Whatever. Yeah. yeah something more manageable. Yeah. And so uh, you have a lot of stuff to deal with. And what I do is I oversee the whole move process. Everything yeah. from, uh, you know, how do I get started yeah. to completely being unpacked in the new place. And, and you told me that you got involved in this several years ago, but you're local. You, you've been living now in, in Ashland for a number of years? Right. I've been here for about 13 years. I noticed that because it seemed like you knew everybody that I saw when you came into the studio, and I said, well, this is obviously a local, right? Yes. So you've been here for a while. Yes. Uh, but the entity that you work, that you work with, is this, is this you, I think you had mentioned this is actually a kind of a national, or there's a, a national group of folks that do something like that? Yeah. Well, first of all, there's a National Association of Senior Move Managers. Yeah. And um, if you go online, you can just type in the zip code and they'll give you a list of all the move managers in your area so you can find someone. Uh, we're also finally on uh, a place for mom. They've finally given move managers their own section. A place for mom. No, I don't, seem, I don't want to seem like I'm out of touch. What is a place for mom? It's an online information mm -hmm. service mm -hmm. for anything and everything having to do with uh, a place for mom. senior care. So it's called a place for mom, but it's for dads too. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's just a, a free organization that gives information out. I see. I see. And so in addition to that, you said there was actually a move managers. Yeah, it's the National Association of Senior Move Managers. Yeah. yeah. And then within that group, uh, I'm part of a smooth transitions family. Yeah. which is across the U.S., Canada, and even overseas. And so uh, we all have been trained by the same person, so we all work the same. So if someone were to work with me here and were to right. deal with someone in a different state, right. it wouldn't be different. We go about the process the same. I see. I see. And it's, it's a process. It's emotional. It's time-consuming. A lot of times people don't really grasp how long it takes and how much effort it takes. And sometimes people say, you know, my kids are going to help me. I was just going to say, so one of my conversation pieces was, you know, so tell me, you know, what do you say when they say, oh, no, my kids are doing this. Why should I be talking? Because mentally, they're not necessarily thinking that this is part of their expense account, is needing to help somebody figure this stuff out with them and kind of help right. them implement it. So how do you, so what, what, tell, but you were just mentioning one of those stories. So. Yeah, so what I say to them is great. The more they help, the faster you get to where you're going. 
a lot of times what I find out though is once, uh, if the children don't live locally, right. they start to realize they'll come for you know a couple hours or a day and they'll get through a drawer. <laughs> Right. And they'll realize that um, you know their father is agonizing over how many flashlights to take from the drawer of flashlights, and so at the end of the day they have to go back home to go to work for the next week, and they've gotten through maybe two or three drawers in an entire weekend. Right, and they're saying to themselves, "We're never going to finish this." Right. Or I'm never going back there. I never, <laughs> I, I never want to deal with this again. Yeah, well, I or see. on the flip side, you get the families that are very active and very helpful, but at the same time, you start to get tension because everyone knows everyone's hot buttons, and so right. they get to the point where they know that if they need to do it, it's going to be very stressful. And what happens when I talk to families and I talk to people is uh, I get families saying to me, Oh my goodness, we've been trying to get him or her to get rid of those what, shoes or those pictures or that jewelry for years and we couldn't get anywhere and how did you do it? And a lot of it is because I'm not family. Right. And I'm willing to listen to the stories that they've heard so many times that they say, yeah, yeah, mom, I've heard that. I don't need to hear it. And I also um, understand how attached people get to their things and a lot of times I'll have the the kids say to me oh well you know when mom's at the doctor's office we'll just come in we'll clear, clean out the room and I'll say to them how would you feel this if could be did really bad you? right right <laughs> and what if they somebody say did that to oh well I don't think I'd like that and I said well so that's something you don't want to have happen because you want it to be an exciting moving forward experience instead of a stressful experience. So, how do you do that? How do you make the move, which is, is often, I don't want to say inevitably, but pretty much inevitably, a downsize, because the kind of the premise of a move is, well, when I do my, my, my shows at, at the Senior Center, I always have this kind of standard couple that I use, Frank and Mary, they're mm -hmm. Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And I always say, what's great about my clients is they get the joke, you know? They've heard of Peter, Paul, and Mary. But, but their, goal in, their goal, my client's goal, is to die and be buried in the backyard. None of these people ever imagined mm -hmm. that they were ever going to move from this house, where they probably, where many of them have raised their kids, and there's just memories and images floating in this yes. house, right? So that said, how, how does that become a pleasant experience, moving from there to you know, another child's house or the condo or assisted living or anything? Well. First off, we start with uh, recognition that we're going to some place that's more suitable for living. Um, there's less concerns over the yard, the gutters, the uh, repairs, snow. the paint, the yeah. snow. Right, right. And I, I get a lot less grief about the issue of snow anymore because of this past winter. Yes. So we talk about that and we try to make it a fun process. You know, I talk to them about when you were a child and you moved, your parents did all the work and you just looked at the new adventure and meeting new people and new friends and mm -hmm. what were you, you going to do. And so we focus on that, on moving forward. And oh, so, so, you, so it's like do yourself a favor, just be thinking about the good parts as yeah. opposed to having to even think about this other yeah. stuff. Yeah, I tell them, you know, I'm going to take all the stress away, all the feeling of overwhelm, yep. and we're just going to get it done. And the more the family helps, that's great too. Uh, I, leave, I, I do give my clients homework. I'll tell them, uh, you know, between now and the next time I come back, why don't you empty those two drawers of pictures? Or there's a file cabinet, why don't you go through one drawer in the file cabinet? Yeah. And uh, I gauge when I come back, I have clients that have said, I did the entire room. I just got so into it. I was so excited. And then I have other clients that said, I couldn't even go into the room. And so after a few times working with a client, I get a feel for where they fall in that spectrum. Right. And I just adjust how we work together. Um, I have, I've had clients where 
uh, cleaning wasn't their forte. Mm -hmm. And as we got through the process, uh, the children came to visit and said to me, oh my goodness, I'm so proud of how the house looks. I've never seen it look so good. And thank you. Uh, I've had other people who have um, a lot of pictures. Yeah. And they focus on going through the pictures while I'm working on making sure that uh, we, fig we get everything packed. We, I do floor plans so that... And, yeah, tell, tell, me about, tell me about floor plans and tell me about... So you start off with a person. How, yeah. how, how, do, how do you start, you know? And you kind of lay out an agenda for them in terms of what, you know, what's going what's gonna to happen first, what's going to happen second. And then how does figuring out where they're moving as opposed to where they are play into all of that? Well, some people know where they're going. If they know where they're going, then the first thing that I do is I get a copy of the room layout yeah. so that I know the dimensions where they're going. By the way, you told me in a previous life you're an engineer. Right? Yes. So, so this you can, is where you can my, really get into this, right? Uh, yeah. I, right. This is where my organizational skills and my, I plot everything out on graph paper and I do it online and uh, I make sure that the furniture they're taking is going to fit in the space. And that's very helpful because if you're coming from a house with four bedrooms and a living room and a den and you're going into a space that has maybe a small sitting area and a sleeping area or you're going into your children's house and you have a room and a closet, right. you're limited in how much you can take with you. And so knowing how much space you're going into, then the next step I do is I measure all the furniture in the I wish I could take it with me list. And, uh, oh, I see. So you start off by saying, so we've got this much, because I'm sure that that's for people, especially people like me, who have no visual sense of that, mm -hmm. you know? You just kind of can't conceive of it. Like, how, how have you, where do you start in terms right. of figuring out whether it's going to fit? But actually measuring it, you can find out. Yeah. Right? Well, even measuring it is hard to grasp. Uh, I had one client that I actually cut out little pieces of paper to represent the size of each piece of furniture. Yeah. There were 10 pieces of furniture that she wanted in the new living room. And she was convinced it would fit. So I gave her a piece of paper that was the size of the new living room. I gave her the 10 pieces of paper that were the furniture. And I said, show me here. <laughs> and she looked at the piece of paper in her hand. And she said, there's no way those are going to fit. But it wasn't until I gave her the paper and gave her the right. square that it really connected. And then right. once that realization comes into play and we can figure out the big pieces of furniture that are going, then it becomes a lot easier to then parlay into, okay, well, there's this much closet space, so right. we need to pare down the now, clothes. Because now you're kind of filling in the gaps, right? And there's this much, uh, um, you have this many drawers that you're taking and your kitchen is this size. And so once we come up with that, then we can come to realistic quantities to take with. I am not a proponent of storage. So I get people saying, oh, we can just rent some storage. And you say to them, let it go. And I say, storage is renting an apartment for your belongings. It's expensive. And when it's in storage, if you want the item that's in the back corner, you're not going to get it. It's in storage. Right. So it's really of no value keeping it there. It's just kind of right. reducing your... And it, it, all it's really doing is allowing you to postpone this decision about yeah. is it staying or is it going. You're and putting other, it into this kind of The other thing world. I tell people too is uh, what I find there's a lot of my children's things in the house and it's time to either dispose of it in some direction, whether you sell it or you donate it, right. or have your kids pick it up or ship it to them. Right. Because if they don't care enough about the items to want it in their own home, why are you watching the items for them? Now, so that could actually help me clean out some of the th stuff that's now in my basement. <laughs> yes. Now that you mentioned that. So I've got a, we've got a daughter in Texas and one in DC, and there are these clumps of things. Yes that are pointless for us, but 
but as you've just mentioned, they're also pointless for them. That's the reason why the stuff is there and not where they are. That's a very good point. So you, you kind of start off with this kind of mapping, almost a mapping exercise, yes. an, an exercise of kind of figuring out what you want, right? So where do you go from there? Uh, once we've got everything earmarked for what's getting moved, mm -hmm. then the next step is to make the actual arrangements. I don't physically move furniture, but I do have uh, movers that I have worked with and can recommend. And we get the moving company to come in to make the quote. And that's we, great. So you're not a moving company. No. So you're not deriving any benefit from increasing the amount of stuff that's being moved. No. Right. You're just you're you're in management. Right. Now what what I do is that I pack for them rather mm -hmm. than have the movers pack. And people will ask. A lot of times people will say, "What's the big difference between a move manager and a mover?" Right. Movers pack. If it's there, it gets packed. If you rest your sandwich on the counter in the kitchen it's while gone. the movers go through, it gets packed. If you haven't taken your trash out, it gets packed. Now, movers do a great job of coming in like a swarm of locusts, packing and going out. Right, and figuring out how to get it in the truck and then figuring out how to get it out of the truck. That's and their it job. goes on the first flat surface. And movers are great at that. What I tell people when they're deciding whether I should pack for them or the movers should pack is if I pack it, I can find it for you if you need it before you get to where you're going. And I can find it for you if you need it urgently when you get to where you're going. If I don't pack it, then we're going through a lot of boxes to find where it is. I see. I and see. But I, that's really a choice for them, so they can kind of figure yes. out. And I give them that choice. And um, the, there's not a lot of difference financially between me doing the packing and the movers doing the packing. So it's really a preference. Yep. And uh, from that standpoint, I've had clients who we say, you know, push comes to shove. If it comes to move day and you just couldn't part with things and they need to be packed, we'll let the movers pack it. And I just recently had a client who uh, wanted something when she got to the new place. And it was something I hadn't packed. And all the kitchen boxes just had a K on them. Right. And we had to go through six tall kitchen boxes to find the one thing that she was looking for <laughs> so that she could make dinner that night. Right. Right. So those um, because once again, it's, re it's really about just kind of reducing the stress. Yes just because you've done it so many times that you know what those stress points are. And the other thing too is if, if you're going to a very small location, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the time the movers are done, I pretty much have my client completely unpacked. So uh, again, another client I had, uh, the daughters took her out for the day. I was there when the movers came. I followed the movers to the new place. I was unpacking. The daughters brought her at dinner time, into her new place, the bed was made, everything was unpacked, and the daughters were sitting there socializing with her on her sofa, and I was finishing with uh, hanging pictures for her. And yeah. the daughter said, oh, this is great. <laughs> now, this sure. was a case where the family was involved, the family was around, yeah. but they had their own activities and their own lives and they didn't have the time to do what I was doing for them. Right, and, and so you gave them the, the, the wonderful gift of getting to be daughters that day. Yes. As opposed to just the potential conflicts involved and uh, that could have been really yeah. bad. And yeah. that's, I, I have a mission statement that I have for my business and yep. my, my ideal smooth transition is that the last night for my client in their old home is relaxed, and restful because they know everything's under control. They spend the next day doing whatever they want, knowing everything's under control. And then they come back to their new home, wherever it is, whatever it is, feeling warm and welcome because everything is familiar and they can move on to their new chapter without having any hiccups along the way. And they can sleep that night in their new home, in their new environment, and move forward. That is such a wonderful vision. So, so you, when you, we came in, you gave me 10 top downsizing tips, Yes. right? You wanna talk about the ones that you would think are the, 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 the most important for people to take away today? Yeah. And I think you've talked about some of these things, but I'm really interested. Uh, one of them is start early, end happy. 
start it early takes, end happy? It takes a long time to go through everything. It is amazing what gets tucked in drawers and cubbies oh, yeah. and basements and attics and garages through the years. And uh, the earlier you start, even if you're not planning on downsizing, it's never too early, and you don't even have to be a senior. To give it just as cleaning, as opposed to downsizing, right? You're just well, getting... No, not really cleaning. It is... It, it's well, you're getting part, rid of some parting with things. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and even my daughter, every now and then, she goes to a purge in her room. She brings out boxes of things she's not using anymore, and I, I feel like I'm teaching her at an early age. That's right. You're doing move managing. <laughs> yes. And she's not a senior. <laughs> So it's never too early to start. Yeah. And if you haven't looked at something for a year, the likelihood that you really need it is very low. So go through it, and if it is collecting dust, then it's something that doesn't need to stay there. It's taking up valuable space that something else could be. Right, right. Uh, another one of the tips that I emphasize on people is get generous. Uh, give things away, mm -hmm. donate. When it's your family, uh, I sometimes tell people the story about my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I would go visit, we would have tea. She liked to have afternoon tea. Yeah. Yeah. And one time I was admiring the teacups. She said, take them. I said, oh, Nanny JJ, if I take the teacups, what will you drink from? And I felt really bad. Yeah. And her response to me, and I've remembered it, for years and years, and I pass it on to people, was I would much rather you take it now, and I can enjoy knowing that you are enjoying the teacups, rather than knowing that you'll get them when I'm gone. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. And so the more generous you can be, then you know it's going to a good home, you know it's going to a good purpose, yeah. and you know it's not going to continue to collect dust. Right. So right. keep it moving. That's, that's if you take one thing from our conversation today, it's keep it moving. And yes, and be, I was just going to say, and be, by being generous also, you get that wonderful blessing of actually getting to having people say, well, thank you. Yes. That was just a wonderful thing. That's great. That's great. Any other of those, the top 10 that you would say are really uh, things they should take away? Uh, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Whether it's family, whether it's uh, religious organizations, whether it's the neighbor, there's nothing to be ashamed of having someone come in and help you clean out your garage or help you right. clean out your basement or your attic. Uh, the other thing is, uh, in a prior life, I was involved with recycling. Yeah. So I'm big about recycling. I don't like throwing things away. Most things today can be recycled they have another life to look forward to. Right. And you may not necessarily be able to figure that out because you're not like, you know, as an older, as a person, you're not like an engineer. You don't know what the possibilities are. Right. So but, don't assume that it's junk. Right. So there's, you know, there's a lot of resources today online. There's a, a website where you can post things that you're giving away and people come to your driveway and pick it up. That's free cycle. There's a lot of donation places that you can drop off or pick up. When the donation truck comes, give them something. Right. And that's where I created right. my retired treasure sack that I also gave you. This? Is yes. It? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, I realized that I would get the postcards in the mail or the phone call saying the truck is coming next week. And with my schedule, just like everyone else's schedule, I would think, I have things I can give, but I don't have the time to pull it together. Right. So I created my retired treasure sack that you put in a location that you go past a lot. And any time you find something in your house that you know you really don't need, you, you put it in the sack. And then when the donation truck calls, you have something ready for them. That's great. And if, you don't, if people don't have my retired treasure sack, right. you can pretty much a box, a bag, anything, right. but think about it. If you're in your closet and you buy something new, get rid of something. If you're in your bathroom and the dentist gives you a new toothbrush, throw away, or the, people usually take the old toothbrush and put it underneath right. to clean oh, jewelry, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you only need one or two extra toothbrushes. Or unless you have a lot of jewelry. 
10 or 20, you know, you really don't need. is a little more than you need. Now those you throw away. Listen, thank you very much for doing this, right? It, it's just, I mean, I could tell you just have the right personality also to be doing this, right? Because you just kind of exude calm, which is exactly the opposite of what people think about when they're thinking about moving. So thank you very much for this. I think it's really helped. I hope that you have enjoyed listening to this. This uh, moving, I, from a lot of my clients, can be one of the most traumatic pieces of your life as a senior. To have somebody be able to figure this out with you, well, at the same time, get your kids to do what they want to do, right? But don't get them to do what they don't want to do because it's not going to get done. So thank you very, very much. I hope you've enjoyed the show. And by the way, can we, hopefully we'll have like a banner or something. Uh, we, we'll get that on cable so that people will know if they wanted to talk to you where to go. Okay. Thank you for joining us for this installment of Bridge Around Briefs, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.